Hi everyone, and welcome to Soul Talk with Sonia and Sonia. So glad to join, that you can join me today. So today we're talking about three bullet points. The first one is a relationship with God. Two is studying and how to study. And the third, we're going to talk about fasting. So how this comes together. So you know all, I have a passion for single women and helping them to marry who God has a day for them. I didn't get married for the first time until I was 46, and that was a long wait. And so I was focusing a lot of times on when to get married, when to get married. And God really wanted intimacy with me. <clears throat> Let me tell y'all about what happened one time. I was about to get some bootleg, bootleg cable. And so, of course, I knew it was wrong, but I was going to get it anyway. And I got convicted, not because of the cable, but I heard God say to me, you already don't study my word like you should, and you're about to get cable. So, I did not get the cable. I called and counseled them coming out, and I started studying my word. So, let's go back to having a relationship with God. It's easy to do. Prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. God wants intimacy. And how you do that is just talking to him. It doesn't have to be anything formal. Like you have to be on your knees. You have to be a certain posture. You can talk to God anywhere. On the toilet. While you ride it in your car. On the bus. It doesn't matter. You can even write letters to God. I do that sometimes. And he's even spoken to me as I'm writing. Which I thought was so cool. That was like so supernatural to me. Is I'm writing, God is speaking to me. You can journal, just write your thoughts. God, this is what happened to me today. You can write out your prayer, but it doesn't have to be something formal, okay? God just wants you to share what's on your heart and on your mind with him and telling him everything. There's There should be no part of your life that's off limits to God. He cares about everything that concerns you. What concerns you, concerns him. So I just want to encourage you to just start talking to God about what's happening in your life. You can use your phone. You can record messages to God. There's so many ways to do this, okay? So it doesn't have to be formal like some of us were taught, okay? So studying. So talk about prayer, just talking to God, nothing formal, and then studying the Word. So people sometimes get intimidated we talked about being intentional. And so starting your day with God, I have breakfast with God. I sit down as I'm having breakfast. Um, I may be watching a YouTube video. I may be listening to worship music. I may be studying a specific topic. And so I start my morning with him. So to study, you know, it's like, how do I know what to study? Ask God what to study. But he lays in your heart. If there's something that's been really bothering you, um, if you don't have, um, you have anger challenges, study the opposite of that. Study peace. If you are going through something, find a scripture for it. Meditate on that. If you need wisdom, why not start with Proverbs, the book of wisdom, and read a chapter every day. And find a verse in the Bible that you understand that you can relate to. I like the NIV, the New International Version. You also have the New King James Version. You have the Message. There's so many. There's an app on me. You have so many different versions of the Bible, so we don't have an excuse. You also have the Parallel Bible, which is color-coordinated, and it has multiple versions of the Bible. So we don't have an excuse to not understand the Word. We have it at our fingertips on our phone. We get devotional sent to our phone. We have no reason to not start our morning with God. So to study, just asking God what to study. You can also get a concordance if you are looking for a certain word or scripture in the Bible. It's alphabetized. So let's say you want some scriptures on peace. Look up peace and show you all the scriptures. Or there's a scripture I already know. I don't know all of it. Concordance will help you with that. You can also Google it. I Google a lot of scriptures. It's important to have a good Bible that you understand. 
You can also get into a small group if your church has it, or you can find a small group online. Be careful that God leads you. I don't want you to get online and you're in a group and it's a cult or they teach the wrong doctrine. So if it doesn't sound right, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. But be prayerful. That's what the Bible says. Get wisdom with all that get and get understanding. So you want to make sure if you get a group online that God is leading you to that group. Because that's what people get sucked into stuff they shouldn't be in or people they shouldn't be with because people are good imposters perpetrating like they're Christians, but they're really not. They're being used by the devil. And so maybe there's um, Bible study at your church. So going to Bible study. And then you can just study on your own. God leads you to study. Okay? And then our last bullet. I'm going to say something before we move on. I study 30 minutes in the morning, Monday through Thursday. Because I work Monday through Thursday. So that's in my routine. And Friday I study too. Maybe weekends sometimes are longer. Sometimes it's shorter. But you'll notice the difference when you're studying the Word and then you're not studying the Word. You just, there's something in your spirit that doesn't feel right because your spirit wants more of the word. And when you stop doing it, it's like there's this absence, this void. And so just continue to pray, be steadfast and praying and studying your word. And, you know, just the Bible is so interesting because if you start in the Old Testament, it's like some of the Old Testament is like a soap opera. I mean, they was doing some crazy stuff. And when you start studying, really get into your word, you enjoy it, right? You feel so good. We also will have distractions. Of course, the phone, the kids, this texting, I am pinging. Hey, this is my time. Maybe set a timer. I'm set it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and don't let anything or anyone take you from studying your word. The word cleanses you. It heals you. It helps you in various areas of your life. It brings strength. The word is powerful. So in my video, I'm going to talk about my celibacy. I'm going to give you some scriptures I use to help me to stay a virgin until I got married at 46. And the word kept me. Okay? All right, so fasting. Fasting is crucifying your flesh. Especially when you're a foodie like me and you like to eat. And you have to mentally prepare yourself to fast. When I'm getting ready to go on a fast, I just, oh, I just, ooh. I don't want to do it in my flesh. My flesh detests fasting, but my spirit is so excited. I mean, just taking time, no phone, no social media, no nothing. To spend time with God, my flesh repels it, but my spirit is so excited to do that. And so there are multiple fasts you can do. The most popular is the Daniel fast. If you never fasted before, I suggest the Daniel, where it's fruits, vegetables, legumes. And so no sugar, no alcohol, no just water. And ask God, how long does he want you to fast? Does he want you to do a one day, a three day? A seven day and those who have been fasting for a while you know they be ready to do just the all water fast but if you just started off and you haven't fasted that often you may want to start with the day but pray and ask God to lead you so fasting means fasting from food okay because in the biblical days they didn't have internet TV etc so it was just a fast from food so when I fast, I fast with food, no phone, no TV, no social media, because that can taint your spirit. Everything that you view on TV, most of it is not pure. And you want to hear from God. You don't need any distractions, and those are distractions. So if I'm fasting or whatever area, I'm going to get scriptures on that. Okay, I fasted many times on the mind because the devil had plugged me with and disciplined thoughts. Um, I'm bombarding my thoughts, ruminating thoughts. And so I would have scriptures on the mind. And so whenever I was fasting, I got hungry, I would pray and I would read those scriptures. And your 
reading those scriptures and eating it like it's food to you. That gives you nourishment. It helps sustain you and keep you. So I also, when I fast, I write down any questions I have for God. So if it's about business, it's about who to marry, whatever it is, I write it down. And then I expect God to speak to me. He may not speak to me on the fast, but definitely after the fast, I expect God to speak to me. Just like when you pray, you're expecting God to do things that you are asking him to do. And that's faith, right? When you're expecting God to move on your behalf, without faith is impossible to please him. So when you fast, make sure you know how many days God wants you to fast, what kind of fast, write down what you're fasting for or any questions so that when God works the miracle in your life, when he moves, you have evidence. The evidence is for you, not for anybody else. Wow, I asked God to do this and he did it. I needed an answer about this and he answered me, right? So you have proof for you of what he did for you. Fasting is time with God. Make sure when you fast, you have some worship music that sets the atmosphere. And uh, watch some good videos on fasting. Jensen Franklin is like this fasting guru. He, he's just, he just has like anointing to teach fasting. So he's really good. He's um, well known. He has a book as well on fasting. A couple of books. Uh, I read one of them. It was powerful. And this is a book of his church members fasting the testimonies they have of being healed, delivered, saved, loved ones being saved. But you can fast for other people. If you have a spouse that's not saved, or mother, or sibling, a loved one that's not saved, you can fast for them. And so fasting is powerful. You're saying no to your flesh and you're saying yes to God. If you're fasting, you could fast with someone. But when you fast, the Bible says don't tell anybody because it's between you and God. The biblical days, they made fasting to be out, to make it to be out something like boastful. So that's why he says when you fast, don't tell anyone because that's between you and God. That's private. And you don't want, everybody doesn't need to know that, right? Because they're tempting you. And you know, when you go on a fast, for those that are back in the office, what do they have? Pizza, some type of special lunch. And you're like, I can't even eat all this. But that's what happens when you fast. You get tempted. And that's what prayer does as you fast. It helps you to be strong and to resist temptation. So this helps with your relationship with God, drawing you closer to Him, spending that quality time with Him, that intimacy. Fasting just kicks off, gives you a boost in your relationship, a boost in your ability to hear God, a boost in your discernment. And so fasting is powerful. Every Christian should fast on a regular basis. I fast once a month. My husband and I fast together. And he led us to do it. He said, y'all want us to start fasting. And so that's what we do. That's why it's important to marry a godly spouse. Isn't that awesome that when your spouse can say, hey, let's pray, let's go on a fast, let's start studying the word. That's what God wants for you. And he has not run out of godly men just for you. So be encouraged. Thank you for joining Soul Talk with Sonia. Be blessed.